I usually find it's best to line up the crosshairs during the daytime. So if you look at in here, I've actually lined up, you can see a little white blob there. That's not exactly on the crosshairs, but that's the moon there uh, through my crosshairs. And the idea is that that should match what you see in here, which is uh, here. This means that once you uh, get into nighttime viewing, you're better equipped to find things because whatever you're seeing in your crosshairs there, in the centre there, that white thing is the moon there, you're actually seeing in your eyepiece as well, which is here. It can be awkward getting pictures uh, daytime for the moon, but it's up there. I'll try and show you. Uh, this is an old moon. It's last quarter, which means it's a full half. But here's the conus. And I've put a medium power eyepiece on 17.5 millimeters. Spotoscope here. And I'll try and see if you can see the moon through there. that little white disc there. Let's see what we can see through the, through the scope itself. Oh, that's nice. Can okay, you see? It's morning sky, 24th of October. And it seems to be much better at, uh, in the morning than it was at night time, as you can see less glare, try and get some focus there, and you can see the Maure, that's the seas as they were called by the ancients. My setup is a very basic uh, four and a half inch telescope, um, the conus, I've put a, a rough a polar mount onto it, basically um, the axis which is here uh, you can point this to where roughly where the pole star would be. I'd need to twist this around a bit more, but even with um, my polar alignment fairly good, the moon itself, because of its position in the garden, of course it's setting, move, moves 15 degrees in one hour, which is a long way. But that's the basic setting for the video. But you see the difference. It Sometimes you find you've got to put the moon at a slight angle on the eyepiece and last night I was looking at some stars and found the same thing on Pleiades which is the Seven Sisters of which I can only see five but it'll take a medium magnification this the terminator which is the dividing line between, between the sun and the shadow where the light breaks it's always the most interesting part on the moon. So if you zoom in onto that, you can certainly see crater rays there very clearly. So it will stand a certain amount of magnification. Yeah, bit of a cloud there going across, as you can probably see. But it's well worth the effort to try and catch the moon at this part of its lunar cycle. Because against the blue sky, it's not so washed out. And the contrary, you can get some lovely contrast on the surface itself. Yeah, a bit of higher magnification there. 
you've got the Terminator there. Zoom in on these craters here, right on the Terminator. And you've got, you know, that's about as far as my telescope can take it. Just from very basic equipment, you know, you're seeing Earth's nearest neighbour, surface details, you know, very, very interesting. There we are, trying to find, follow the Terminator down a bit there. It's clearer and more blurred in some parts than others, as you can see. Bearing in mind the image is, of course, upside down. Right, I'm actually videoing some of the brighter stars of Pleiades, which are the Seven Sisters. Now, I didn't realise that this this is a VGA video. Okay. Against the, the blue sky here, uh, there's a lot of clouds coming across this moon. It's past um, last quarter. It's an old moon, but you can get uh, some useful shots. Particularly good for seeing um, crater rays and Maria. But against the blue sky. You should see a Terminator if you're careful. Here, I've, I've uh, magnified it somewhat there. And the moon's it's setting now in the late morning, 27th of October. And I'm looking at medium magnification here, I'm trying to see if I can see anything up towards the Terminator side of the moon there. There's quite a lot of glare on it, you know, a lot of ultraviolet. I'm not using a filter, it's just a basic video camera. Yeah, that's, this is a better shot here showing the Terminator. Um, again, quite a bit of glare on it. If I turn the camera slightly to try and avoid the glare, I might be able to see it slightly better. Maybe back a bit. You can try and zoom in on other parts of the moon while we're here. There you go. That's the Terminator there, which is difficult to see. And there should be some Earth shine on it. There you go, that's a very reasonable shot there. And you're looking upside down images in a video. This telescope inverts the image here. Here you go, try a slightly different angle, rotating camera by 90 degrees. Here you go. I mean, you may not get all of the what's in the eyepiece in because the camera has only got a certain focal length there. What you've got is a slightly different angle there really. You can see the crater rays are brilliant there. Maria. Showing that even daytime astronomy can be useful. Again, just try and zoom in on those to raise at the top. Ah. 
That's Marky Boy signing off 24th of October with the trusty old Kermoscope. Enjoy!